In the previous lecture, we put together our script to control the number of spawn cars. So we've got this track going around. We're creating all of these cars. We want to use these cars to determine the best strategy for getting around the track. Now, by that, I mean coming up with all the settings that you need to put into your car. If we go over to the hierarchy and select our car that we've got inactive at the moment, in the inspector, you'll have a look down. There's an AI controller on the car. Now in this, there's a section called car settings, and this program is in all of the different parameters that you can possibly put into the Unity vehicle settings so that you can control how the car is going to behave. Now the settings that are in here are the ones that I've come up with through trial and error myself. What we're going to do now is actually use a genetic algorithm to get the cars to figure out what the best path around the track is or what the best strategy of steering, how far to look ahead to make a decision, the maximum torque, the steering angles, and all of these other things here. If you're interested in how you put a car together in the physics system in Unity, then don't forget that I go through it step by step in my AI course, and that will give you an idea of where all these values come from and what they do. For now, we're not really going to go through them, but feel free to dig around inside the AI controller script and see where they're actually used. Now, when we have genetic algorithms, we need a lot of uh, cars that's called our population and they're going to drive around the track and test out all of these different settings. The ones that make it the furthest around the track we will call the fittest. Now the fitness value will be basically the distance that a car gets around the track and we're going to store it in this fitness value down here that I've added to the AI controller. So after a certain amount of time of going around the track, we will stop all of the cars and we'll say, which one of you is the fittest? We'll get all of the fittest cars, all of the others that didn't do very well at all, we'll discard those and then we'll breed the fittest together. Now, by breeding, I mean that we're going to look at their values for these settings and actually mix and match them to see if we can actually come up with a different car. All of this is going to happen inside of our spawn cars script. So let's open that up and get started. All right, so to begin, we need to grab the car that gets instantiated. So game object C equals our instantiate. Then we're going to get hold of the AI controller script that is on there because that's got all the settings in that we need. So AI equals C dot get component AI controller. Right, well, once we've got that, we can access all of those different properties. The first one is the steering sensitivity. So we're going to put this in and we're going to initially set it to a random value. So random dot range and we'll set it between or around the value that I actually have set as the default. So if you have a look in the inspector to the default values, then you can pick something from there. Okay, and then we go ahead and do all of the other settings as well. Now, the nice thing about me having gone through and done this manually is that we have a kind of range that we know that works for all of these different values. But if you had no idea what the values could be, you could have just a massive range in here. But the bigger that range is, then the more cars and the more trials that you would need to actually hone in on the best value, which you could absolutely do. There's no reason you can't, but we're doing this with values that I already have figured out kind of work so that we can get to a solution a lot quicker. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed the video up while we go through all of these, but these are all of those properties in the inspector. With all of those done, we also need to keep uh, control over all these cars. So we need to keep a list of them. So up the top here, I'm going to add in a public list of game objects. And we'll call that cars like this. And then down in here in the start, we'll actually put cars.add and we'll add car C to that list which will allow us to keep a track of it. Now the other things we need in a genetic algorithm is to keep track of the time and how many generations that we have actually spawned. 
So we're going to have an int for generation time. Now the generation time is how much time you want to let any particular generation live for. So how long do those cars need for you to get a feel or for them to get a feel of the track that they're going to do their best or worst. So this will also determine how long it's going to take to run. Now I'm going to set this to 20 seconds initially. And yes, it will take a long time to go through a whole heap of iterations with these cars, but that's just the nature of any machine learning. It takes an awful amount of time. So don't even think that it's a quick fix to anything. But once you know these methods, you'll kind of see just how powerful they actually are. And genetic algorithms aren't necessarily something you want to use in real time games. I know that they have been used, but as far as doing something like we're doing here, where we're training up an AI for our environment based on all these settings that we aren't even sure about is a really great use for it. So we have our generation time. Then we're going to add in our float for the start time, which will equal zero. And that will change based on when every generation is created. And then we'll have a public int for the generation uh, number. Okay, so the first generation will be generation one. Now on the screen, you might have seen a bit of text. We just come here and see this text up here. We're going to print on the screen which generation we're up to so that you've got a little bit of feedback. So we'll put public and we're going to put a text mesh pro dot text mesh pro GUI and that will be our text mesh that we'll pass through there. Now coming down back into our start, after we've created all of our cars, we'll put time dot time scale equals five. So this is a multiplier of how fast it's actually going to run. So we want it to run at five times the speed you can put that up as high as you like. If you put it up to like 20 or 30 seconds or even a minute, uh, then you're not going to see a lot happening on the screen. But initially, we just want to see what's going on. With true genetic algorithms and machine learning and like training, things like that, you wouldn't necessarily sit there and watch it. You would let it run and go off and do something else. But because you want to see how this is working and I want to see how this is working. We're just going to keep it at a speed that makes sense. And then finally, we'll set this text mesh dot text. And in there, we will put trial as a string with a colon and space. And then we'll add into that the generation. Now, something I just want to point out with the way that I put these random.range values in is because I've got integers inside of here, it means that this is going to give you integer values. If you want to get a little bit more accurate and provide an extra range of values, you can simply put a 0.0f on the end of all of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Right, so that's the start done. We can save it at this point. Let's go back into Unity. And what we're going to do is find our car manager. And once we have that and it's finished compiling for us, we can find our text mesh. Now our text mesh is this here on the screen. Now that's attached to our canvas as text TMP. And just drag and drop that down into the uh, text mesh exposed variable there. So that will allow this to be updated. So at this point, if we press play, we should get our trial number one up the top right there. Now, each of these cars at this point will have different settings because we've programmed them that way. So they will start to behave a little bit differently. And you can see that we've got fair few cars zipping around there, but then we have this huge big traffic jam going on at the start. Now these will be cars that just can't figure out what on earth is going on. So they're the ones that you essentially want to strip out later on. Okay, so now let's think about how we're going to put the fitness values in. 
So in this case, the fittest car would be the one that's got the furthest around the track, given the amount of time that you've given it. Now, the easiest way to measure the distance the car has gone is to check on the waypoints that it has gone through. In the AI controller code, now I know you haven't created this yourself, but there's a fitness value down there. Let me just open this up and we'll have a look at how I've programmed it. So I've got the fitness value here. And then if we go down into the code, and it doesn't matter if you're not familiar with this particular code, but every time we hit a waypoint, which is what this says here, so if our distance to the waypoint is close enough, then fitness goes to plus plus. So basically the cars are already programmed to update that fitness value and I've put that in there for you. It's actually quite important of how you would think this fitness value should go into the cars. If you've got a car racing around the track, measuring the distance that it's gone is quite you know, interesting and difficult. For example, if you had a car that just went all over the place, it's spun out of control, then it would have gone a long distance. Doesn't mean it's fit though for purpose. But because we've got all these waypoints in our circuit just here, going around the track, I'll just quickly uh, turn them on again so you can see them. Every time a car hits one of those waypoints, I'm just adding it to the fitness. So the more waypoints that it hits, then the fitter it is. So the fitness value is a very, very important part of the algorithm for you to determine. And you really do need to think about it to make sure that the car with the best fitness value is actually the best car. Okay, so we've now got all of those values going on inside of our spawn cars script. Let's go back to here. What we're going to do in the next video is to actually start breeding these cars when our generation time comes to an end. And then we'll reset this again for a new population of cars. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.